Hey there, and welcome to episode four of Eclectish, the podcast. My name is Em, and today I will be talking a little bit about one of my favorite spiritual women at the moment, whom I've learned more about recently. Today's topic is about Princess Miao Shan, or better known later as Quan Yin, the goddess of compassion. She has to easily be one of the most, I guess you could say, inspiring and astonishing figures in history that I've read about so far. I've been learning a lot from all of these wonderful women across history, so it's only right to dedicate an episode um, to such a woman, right? So let's get into it. Now, her background. Who is Miao Shan? Um, there's many, and I mean many, tales of how Quan Yin came throughout time in order to teach lessons of compassion. I am now going to explore with you one of these tales, which is the tale of Princess Miao Shan. The tale is set in the 7th century of China. Miao Shan is said to be born into a wealthy family as their third daughter, causing her to be quite a disappointment from like the beginning, kind of Matilda style, mainly because her family was looking for an heir to the throne. Her birth is one of the most, I guess you could say, important parts of her um, tale. Now, as you would expect, someone of the caliber of Quan Yin or Miao Shan had to have an extraordinary birth, something kind of beyond human comprehension and you would actually be quite right (laughs) um her birth was extremely uncommon mainly because as soon as she had entered earth it started trembling and a sweet blossom fragrance filled the area not only that but she also managed to instantly make the land blossom right local people claimed to be able to see signs and symbols of holy incarnation on her body at the time even though this was not only a notorious blessing in itself, but also a miracle. Her parents' selfishness and desire for a boy made them completely oblivious, like completely blind to the holy creature they had just before them. Basically like Matilda. (laughs) Onto her marriage, and I guess you could say rebellion, right? As soon as the king decided she was old enough to marry, which was quite young, um, as you'll see, it's kind of a pattern throughout society. But whatever, it's kind of creepy. Um, so yeah, as soon as he decided that she was old enough to marry, he decided he wanted her to marry a wealthy man in order to have some sort of backup to the throne later on, since he had only had daughters and he needed some type of male figure as a plan B. Even though Miao Shan was completely against marriage, mainly because she didn't really care for it, nor desired to partake in it, Instead of arguing with her father, which would have just been kind of pointless, I guess you could say, she only agreed, but with three conditions, right? She told her father that she would marry this man if he could get rid of three misfortunes. Number one, he would have to have the ability to eradicate suffering from people as they age. Number two, he would have to get rid of endured suffering um, that people went through as they got ill. And last but not least, he would have to be able to get rid of the suffering caused by death. As her father just stood there mad, confused, <laughs> confused as hell, um, even he couldn't begin to think of who could do these things, right? And so he straight up asked her and she calmly responded that a doctor could do all of these things, which only further outraged her father since he didn't really desire for her to marry a healer, which was a position or I guess you could say level of status that at the time was very low. He he was particularly fond of her marrying someone wealthy in order to increase the wealth of the family. Since they both didn't agree on anything, after this discussion, he decided to punish her by throwing her into hard labor and diminishing her quantities or access to food and drink. However, this did not cause her any issue and instead she actually adapted to it. Since this didn't deter her, she started asking for permission in order to become a nun instead of marrying, to which the king completely refused until she had begged so much that he eventually let her work along with monks in a nearby town. Now, the king wasn't about to lose his battle just yet, so he asked the monks to give her the toughest chores they had, like the toughest, 24-7 no break in order to diminish her desire to become a nun. So they did, to no avail. However, this didn't really seem at all a challenge for Miao Shan, who only worked harder than ever. Um, She worked day and night as everyone else from the temple rested. Here's where, depending on the origin, two things may have happened. According to some tales, the animals nearby the temple knew Miao Shan was a good person off of intuition, 
and so they decided to help her with the chores around the temple. In other instances, some people claim that she was visited by divine beings or angels, whatever you may refer to them as, who also helped her with all her work. Here, here comes, I guess you could say, like the climax. Seeing such divine intervention occur before him, Miao Shan's father was completely blind with anger. Like top 10 white boy punching walls type of anger. <laughs> So he decided that if he couldn't interfere with her and the temple, that he would simply burn the temple down, which I guess is not like, I guess you could say it's not a bad idea, but what type of logic? Anyways, which didn't really work out the way he planned, you know? So in such instances, what would Miao Shan do? Well, she simply put out the fire with her bare hands. Yes, that's her bare hands. No gloves, no type of protection. <laughs> and the weirdest part was not only did she do that but after she had successfully put out the fire she had no signs whatsoever of burning when she finished none um which is a miracle in itself um and having just witnessed that miracle and feeling great amount of just in general fear because you know humans we t we tend to you know throw the old saying that if i don't if i can't see it then why should i believe it right well Imagine as she's seeing it, her father was now determined to have her like executed completely, just completely, no remorse. <laughs> he sent an executioner to kill her, which would have been the end of her life as a tragic tale. But instead, what happened was something quite bizarre, to say the least. Her executioner attempted to kill her multiple times, like multiple and failed miserably. Her executioner attempted to kill her the first time with an axe. That's the first round. However, as the axe got close to her, it shattered into thousands of pieces. So his bright idea was to then replace the axe with a sword. But obviously he hadn't learned his lesson because that also shattered. And last but not least, he tried with a bow and arrow. But as the arrows approached her, they would completely miss like completely and veer off constantly. Finally seeing that he, he wasn't going to be able to kill her, he just decided to use his bare hands, which by the way, super gross, like what the fuck? Mia Shan knew that he would be executed if he couldn't execute her. So she decided to allow him to kill her, which what the hell, <laughs> big brain. <laughs> and instead of leaving him with like the enormous, like gigantic six foot karma <laughs> he would have carried by committing such an act, Instead, she decided to just take the karma from him, leaving him with a clean karma slate and taking the blame herself. So what happened after? Basically, because of her amount of karma now that she had inherited from this man, or, you know, as she chose to, it is said she traveled straight, but like directly to hell or Naraka, as you would call it, where she was the first hand witness for all the suffering souls there and their punishments, right? to which she felt great, like immense compassion for. Because of this, she decided to give everyone her dharma. Dharma is just the opposite of karma. It's, the, it's the good karma. It's things that, it's karma that you accumulate by doing acts of good that she had earned throughout her lifetimes in order for them to ascend either back to earth at least, like at the very least, or straight, go straight to heaven. Because of this, hell had kind of quickly began turning into a paradise almost with only her presence there um which the leader of hell yama didn't really quite appreciate you know he he didn't want to have none of that because he had his role and if she and if she took hell from him she left him without a job so i actually understand that part so what he did was send her back to earth along with one of his demons slash tigers it depends on you know the source where she appeared once again on top of the mountain for fragrant now what happened next basically here she stayed by herself um completely by herself she finally had the option to focus on what she had wanted from the beginning which was going on her spiritual journey and focusing on that understanding her journey and understanding spirituality in general in order to do this she stayed there meditating and contemplating and just in general exploring hidden realms for around nine years or so we could say that she took hermit mode seriously to say the least <laughs> now a whole decade later her father miao chuan yen karma finally caught up to him the king had now become 
seriously ill. He couldn't eat, he could definitely not sleep, and he had been recently diagnosed with jaundice, which was untreatable at the time. Just when he had lost hope of surviving, a mysterious monk appeared at his home, wanting to speak to him urgently. So after several tries, the king finally said yes, and these were the monk's wise words. He claimed that the cure for the king was a medicine that only him could provide. However, he needed the arm and eye of someone without anger. Those were the ingredients for the potion I guess you could say or the medicine when the king heard this he could not recall one person that not only had these attributes but also someone that would be willing to sacrifice themselves in such manners for someone like him which I don't think we can describe him as a good person but <laughs> oh well um that's when the monk assured him that there was only one individual that would do that selflessly with no remorse or regret whatsoever and that they were at the top of Mount Fragrance. The king obviously sent some of his people in search of this enlightened being. They came across Miao Shan at the top of the mountain, who gladly decided to give her arms and eyes in order to save someone's life. Later, after the king had recovered with the medicine made, he went to Mount Fragrance himself in order to give thanks, which is like the bare minimum, but whatever, to the being who had sacrificed themselves so much for him. When he found himself in front of a mutilated Miao Shan, he couldn't, he just begged for forgiveness. And here Miao Shan spoke and said, Mindful of my father's love, I have repaid him with my eyes and arms. After such a sacred sacrifice, the earth trembled, flowers rained down, and the holy manifestation of Quan Yin, the thousand-armed or thousand-eyed goddess, appeared before them. On to the conclusion. After one hell of a journey, like a journey, Miao Shan finally turned into the exact manifestation of compassion. Now, you may be wondering why, why did she have 1,000 arms and eyes? Well, it is said that Quan Yin, or Miao Shan, had been granted practically a straight ticket to heaven. However, as she embarked herself, she took one last glance back at earth and here's when she heard the cries of the people in pain and suffering because of this she immediately decided to come back to earth and stay here until every last soul had been set free of these things with two eyes and arms though she couldn't help as many people as she intended to so she then was blessed with a thousand arms and eyes in order to compensate for the number of humans in pain currently there are countless temples where you will find shrines dedicated to Quan Yin and her philosophy of sacrifice and eternal compassion I believe that because of Quan Yin's depictions throughout history there's actually different accounts some people first recognize Quan Yin as having the body of a man so first Quan Yin came onto the planet or manifested here as a man and then as a woman in another lifetime and then they actually became kind of genderless or more so a androgynous i guess you could say like a non-binary person uh more of like an androgynous spiritual figure oh also I wanted to talk about this. There's also an oracle deck called the Quan Yin Oracle. It's very, very good. At least I've only heard good things about it. So if you want to check that out, I would definitely do so. And on that note, I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to episode number four. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your thoughts and comments down below. So yeah, thank you and goodbye. <laughs>